a speeding bullet. If you only knew the power of the dark side. Summer is gone. My sweet summer is gone. Warm was the weather outside the day we met. Blue was the color of skies the day she left. Short was the time we had. It was the best. Cause long were the nights we spent with no rest. I met her on a Friday. She left on a Monday. Wrote me a letter. Said she hoped to see me someday. We had a good time. I can't deny that. You could be my sunshine every time you fly back. There's another one. Your loving and I hate to see you go. My sweet summer's gone. She left me here with sand in my bed. She played me all night long. But I do it all over again. Oh, my sweet summer's gone. And all my men, she made it clear. Her lipstick can't be wrong. My summer, summer, my sweet summer is gone. My sweet summer is gone. Yeah, she left in the morning, gone without warning. Fun while it lasted, lost in the moment. She played me real good, took me for a ride. Now she's out fun and never playing back to real life. Yeah, she dipped out, smoked on my weed, then she flipped out. Left in my slumber, waited till I passed out. And on my dresser was a paper and her number. I filled it up with grass and I burned it for summer. Cause there's another one, no loving and I hate to see. Sweet summer's gone. She left me here with sand in my bed. She played me all night long, but I do it all over again. Oh, my sweet summer's gone. And all my men, she made it clear. Her lipstick can't be wrong. My summer, summer, my sweet summer is gone. My sweet summer is gone. Like a midnight thief You ain't no friend of me How could you leave me out Now my sweet summer is gone My sweet summer is gone Now my sweet summer is gone Hey there, boils and ghouls, the one and only Chuckles the Clown here, Chuckles Crypt, Rhode Island Free Radio exclusive. That's right, I have not panhandled myself out to any other independent podcasts out there or listening because Chuckles is Rhode Island and I belong here in Rhode Island. Uh, the old saying of H.P. Lovecraft saying he is Rhode Island, well, Mr. Lovecraft, push aside because Chuckles the Clown is now the official new and improved and improved Rhode Island. And you're uh, still alive, so that really helps. Yeah, that does exactly. help. And it gives those bragging rights. He comes in now, uh George Garner joining us uh right there. Um uh, man, he's he's got good time. Look, the old he saying look like the cat dragged in and <laughs> boom, there he is. Uh, nurse misery with us as well. And uh yeah, happy uh, summer equinox out there to all my brothers and sisters of the Wiccan religion. Not too many people will give a shout out for a holiday like that, but why not? Uh 
Definitely not one of my favorite seasons of the year. It's yucky. Um, this one hasn't been that bad to start yet. Hopefully, knock on a coffin wood that it, it stays like you're it's doing not right now. A I've, human. It's I've bad. already managed to to burn myself, and we have not started summer yet. Sunburn yeah. that's already. That's how I'm looking. <laughs> wow, that's not good. I mean, because we went out for a hike yesterday to Ramtail Road, and uh, it was beautiful up until the morning and uh, and after the morning. Then it started to get a little little toasty. And uh, let me tell you something, uh, Mother Nature, congratulations. Now, this is, uh, if you guys have never heard of Ramtail Road, and by the way, we are going to be talking about the paranormal the next couple weeks because there are so many really good uh, paranormal movie-related topics coming out. Yeah. So this, this fits in. Now, if you're from Rhode Island and you don't know where Ramtail Road is, pick up the book by Thomas D'Agostino, uh, Ramtail. Really good read. It's one of the most haunted spots in Rhode Island, maybe one of the most haunted spots in America. But when you go down there in the fall or the winter, it is like a vast desert of trees. Like there's no uh, shrubs, nothing growing up in there. It's just the dirt. Uh, we returned yesterday for an outing, and uh, wow. We were wow. only there at, what, the end of April? Yeah, Mother Nature took it over to the point where I could not – I could not find the areas that I normally could. Yeah, I mean, it was very didn't even see the path. yeah. It was very disturbing how quickly uh, she took over that area, along and, with her uh, gypsy moth. Friends. Oh, my gypsy moths! Those things are horrible this year. We need to go in there and spray that. I mean, they were pooping on my head as I was walking <laughs> through there. <laughs> I mean, you're trying to take a piss on a bush, and what rubs up against your your penis? But a gypsy moth. That's for a great way to get a rash. Oh, come on, it's man. a female gypsy moth. He's not some kind right. of sicko. <laughs> I hope so. But well, uh, they are fuzzy. Yeah, they are, and they will give you a bad rash yeah. too, like yeah, if you touch up against yeah. them. Uh, and nothing will eat them because they're bitter and poisonous to most of the animals. So, I guess uh, Japan got the one up on us. We may have uh, dropped a bomb on them, but they dropped um, gypsy huh. moths on us, and, and they just won't die. They, they won't. They're tearing <laughs> apart the trees. There are areas in Rhode Island, folks, and you might have this all over the country too, where trees should be of abundant leaves, but it still looks like spring. And I heard that in some point, some parts in Rhode Island, the gypsy moths are so bad you can actually hear them chewing on stuff yeah. at night. Now that that's, that's something out of a paranormal incident. Yeah, definitely, I think I have heard that because was inside and i thought i heard like you know what when, when there's a light summer shower mm -hmm. and the rain just pitter pats on the leaves yeah so i you know so i looked I, I thought it was just a shower but then i looked out and there was no it wasn't raining no it's a gypsy so, I mean, moth gypsy moth chewing i thought it was my fat girlfriend having a midnight snack but it was the gypsy <laughs> moths out there chowing down i did not say that i did not say that you heard that from uh, the one and only tony jones our our operator and director of all things Rhode Island Free Radio dot org. Um, yeah, and I tell you, Gina, if you're out there uh, thinking of something to do, how about save Mother Nature and uh, find some sort of spray or something out there that is eco friendly and wipe these SOBs yeah. out. Hey, we have all these homeless people and uh, you know unemployed, huge unemployment problem. Why don't we send them out to stomp on all these moths? Yeah, I used to do yeah. that as a for kid. minimum wage. It was kind of gross. You'd step on them and watch the organs go out the front of the mouth. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, you don't. Yeah, these things you don't even. These aren't even fun to step on. Actually. They're gooey. Oh, they're gross. They, yeah, they stick to you. Yeah, they ruin uh, your shoes. I remember using uh, a badminton set to use them like little like ping pongs, and I'd hit them across the yard at my sisters, ah. and they'd go flying and splat at them. I, I was right. always an evil clown, guys. Don't don't look like you're surprised. <laughs> no, but you're right. There is really no good way to get rid of these things. No, really. there is not. But on a on a side step, now these things are kind of terrestrial looking. They're kind of like. Aliens invading the planet. And today's, we are going to be talking about aliens, UFOs, cool movies, cool characters that are aliens and UFOs inspired. Uh, and there are a lot of them out there. And uh, there's more coming. And, there, and I'm hoping that there's maybe this will. There's a big release coming. There is a very big release, 20 years in the making. And uh, I, I don't know how I feel about it taking this long for this movie to come out, but. Independence Day 4, wow. the second one, 20 years in the making is coming out this Friday, uh, minus Will Smith, and uh, the gentleman that played Data in Star Trek returns. Now, correct me in the, if I'm wrong, I remember watching that movie, and the alien 
choking and killing that character and dropping him to the floor. Independence Day. Yeah. The original Independence Day. So how is he back? Maybe I don't he just... Maybe he likes to be choked and he survived. I, I don't know. <laughs> he was into now, who it. Played, now, who played, uh, now, we're talking about the scientist. Yeah, I can never play. remember the actor's name. That I'm not very good at that stuff, guys. So don't hate me for not knowing they actors. Say, but he's going to be in this movie. Yeah, yes. returning as a scientist again. And uh, well, I, well, is this a sequel or is this just a remake? Oh, is this is a sequel. sequel. Or a direct a sequel. And it's, no, it's a sequel. And everything in this movie has taken a large dose of testosterone because mm. everything is bigger is, and better. Is it a Michael Bay movie? Uh, no, it no. It might as well be from <laughs> the looks of it. It is not, but uh, and I gotta give uh, a full like shout out to Mr. Michael Bay. Uh, the second Ninja Turtles was flipping awesome. Uh, as a fan of the series, this was the number two that we should have gotten and we never did. That's all I'll leave it on there because we're talking about aliens. And, of course, yeah, Krang is an alien, was introduced into the Ninja Turtles and on the part like two. The ooze would be paranormal. Uh, not normal. really. It was created by a uh, chemist stuff. But I mean. It does uh, some pretty creepy, messed up stuff. <laughs> it does. But it was a good movie. And I'm telling people out there, it's worth, worth catching on a cheapo Tuesday. Yeah, okay. But now, speaking of good movies, I remember the Independence Day, the first. The reg- the yeah. First, yeah. yeah. Being a real good movie, it, it was. was. As a matter of fact, I've watched that several times. We have a tradition in the insane asylum, which it used to be different in another insane asylum, where we would actually watch Independence Day on the Fourth of July, which it came out in 1996 on the Fourth of July. Independence Day holds up too. If you watch it today, it doesn't look like a 90s movie. No, yeah, the I graphics don't... are still outstanding. And yeah, you... which all goes to my point of why the hell do we need another one? <laughs> I don't know because I guess a lot of people out there decided they wanted to do another one, which some movies don't deserve sequels. Maybe this is one of them. Maybe this is going to kick ass. They did keep some we of the know. original cast, though. So they we'll kept see. Uh, 95% of the original cast. I'd have to say probably 99% of the original right, cast. But other, right, but other than Tony waving the money sign, which is the exact, <laughs> exact and only reason dollar, this dollar. has been done. Yeah. yeah. Where does the... See, I like sequels when the story has a place to go. Where yeah. does that story go? Well, it, from what it's showing and everything that I've, I've seen from the trailer... Uh, Earth has built up for a defense for attack like this again. It's taken 20 years to do so, which, okay, that's kind of cool. Use their technology. But the aliens also, within this 20 years, have been building up their technology in uh, the fact that they are going to return and try once again uh, to conquer and And take over the the resources of Earth. The mothership we thought was a mothership really wasn't as much of a big deal as we thought it was. That thing was huge. <laughs> and but see these, this these new... other things are huger. So in other huger? Words... What type of English <laughs> word? Did, did you graduate from college or high school or something? <laughs> yes, I did. Huger? <laughs> uh, you mean they are, bigger. They, they are yes. more prodigious. Yes. <laughs> there you go. A big word for you. Prodigious. I can't even yeah, say try it. Yeah, try that one again, <laughs> clown boy. I did graduate from college. Right, so, in other, so in other words, the mothership of the first movie is uh, not actually... The mother mothership. I guess yeah. not. It's like the little sister, kid sister ship or something. Maybe. The intermediary ship. Maybe yeah. it was like the Enterprise of World War Two. You know, had all the right. And then there's another uh, bigger Enterprise the in the home, building. Right. There's the home ship or whatever. Yeah. Thing. Oh, guys, I said something educational. World War Two Enterprise. Mm, pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Nobody, they, no, no. nobody understood. There will be no, no one getting that right. They didn't listening. understand that. But I know something they will understand. Uh, a short music break right here. And to bring us into all things UFO, no band better than Megadeth will give you the best song that I've ever heard from them. Hangar 18, right here in Chuckles Crypt, Rhode Island Free Radio.org. We'll be right back.
I absolutely love Megadeth, and you can't talk about UFO stuff without that song. Thank you, Nurse Misery, for picking that out. Uh, one of my favorite metal bands always will be up there, uh, and I know a lot of people don't like their newer stuff because they seem to mellow out, and correctively so, but I still, I still dig their music. Yeah, I said dig. <laughs> and uh, we're talking about UFOs and the paranormal today, um, aliens, uh, flying saucers in the air, and I tell you, it's not such an odd thing for someone nowadays to say they saw a UFO. I mean, it's more so happening now and getting caught with our technology than it was, say, even uh, 20 years ago. If you kept saying, I saw a UFO, someone would lock you up. But You're crazy. say they see ghosts all the time, too, now. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to get to the ghost thing. I mean, oh, they've right. even gotten to the point where they've pulled out religious paintings and stuff, and they question uh, the stuff behind it because it looks like they're UFOs. And there's even questioning, even in ancient religions, that they have carvings of stuff that look like ships that are up in the air. All right. Well, first of all, though, Chuckles, like we gotta like interrupt there. Like UFO. Now, UFO technically just means unidentified flying object. Correct. Now, if you say it's an alien spacecraft, you've identified it. Well, so true. <laughs> but it's still a UFO either way because we don't know what's in that picture. It's unidentified. Until you can prove without a shadow of a doubt. But the fact is, like, who was... nothing but an unidentified object. All that means it's unidentified. Yeah, but who was flying back then? It wasn't us. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the technology to fly some metal saucer. were real. Okay, Nurse Misery, go back in your corner over there (laughs) and and use the book from, uh, yeah, smack yourself in the head with a couple times. Dragons were not real, and these things are bright silver, and they're in these paintings. And I've seen countless photos uh, and and art artifacts where they're depicting ancient life forms and that aren't from this area. Uh, I, I honestly, I will go by and say, yeah, I, I think they exist. I think this is not so much a paranormal thing uh, as it is a reality thing. It's just uh, no one wants to come out and say yes because uh, it's going to cause a real big stink. And uh, I don't think we're ready for something like that personally as a people because we're still fighting each other over stupid religions. Mm -hmm. Never mind something of a higher intelligence that probably already found out that what they're talking about doesn't exist. Unless the aliens are just filming all the wars here for reality television back (laughs) home. You know, I I wouldn't doubt it. There is a speculation that uh, the minute we set off the nuclear bomb and that bright light, went off in the atmosphere that whatever was going by just said, whoa, what just happened in that prehistoric planet? And of all of a sudden, it's interest of, oh, these stupid Neanderthals went to, uh uh-oh, they're starting to play with stuff that uh, might not damage us but could lead down the road to uh, causing harm to us. So, of course, they paid in. Now, when you think of aliens and you think of Chuckles Crypt, of course, we're going to talk about movies and comics. And uh, there, there are a ton of movies, but I pulled out my favorite. Screw those lists that are on the Internet. Hmm. They're horrible. I don't know who comes up with those. They're going to be like uh, the same people that criticize the movies. It's, well, maybe you need to start doing your own movie lists on YouTube. Yeah, I think I do. And we'll talk about that later, too, the restructuring of the Chuckles uh, YouTube, which is... We can't give away too much, though. It's in work right now. a lot under wraps. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with one of my favorite, and it's a television show, and it's been made into um, movies, it's been made into comics, and that, of course, is The X-Files. I get really excited every time I hear that music click up. <laughs> and yes, uh, a good portion of it wasn't... Uh, aliens and UFOs. They brought in the the ghost and uh, the cryptozoology parts of it, which was really cool. But the the prime story to that was the gentleman was trying to uh, find out how his sister was abducted and went up into you know into this flying saucer. Really cool, really cool show. The movies were excellent. I I didn't find one of those I didn't like, and the comic books are uh, just as cool. IDW has picked them up. And uh, is has a whole series. The only downside of that is when they got rid of Agent Smolder and Scully, and they tried to replace them. Uh, it really damaged that show. I mean, the Smoking Man was stupid. 
It was horrible. And then after that, the season just kind of crashed. You took your two biggest characters and you said, oh, we don't need them, yeah. and tried introducing to us characters we really didn't give two shits about because these other two characters were part of the season for five to six years, if not more, and then all of a sudden here, smoking man. By the way, that smelly hippie that was here last week is the new ch- host of uh, Chuckles Crip. I quit. <laughs> I quit right now. It's no longer Chuckles Crip. This is Chuck D. Clown's Crip. Come on down, Chuck. I hear you need a job. Uh, any thoughts or about the movie X-Files? We go around the table. I mean, I know we all grew up with it. Uh, yeah, oh, don't okay. all speak at once here. <laughs> Wasn't sure which direction you were going. There. Well, he was staring right at you. Yeah. Oh, I was looking at you immediately because I'm like, all right. All right, who cares? Dead radio is bad radio. <laughs> exactly. Let's go. I remember watching the show. I honestly didn't know it had became a comic at all. So did the comic happen during yeah, the Yeah, it happened show? during it and into now. Uh, and even they released their own album that Alice Cooper and Rob Zombie wrote a special song just for the X-Files no album. Really cool music album. If I can find that, I will play that uh, album in its entirety for our next show if I can find it. Yeah, see, I watched early X-Files. I don't remember the Smoking Man or any of the later stuff, so that part eludes me. But basically how they always there was always something creepy on it and it was always exciting to see the monster and they usually always made you wait and even the new ones the new ones was good tv and they put them netflix exclusive which i loved and it got you well, it to was, what that six-part mini series oh yeah that was really cool uh was it netflix or hulu i think it might have been was hulu. on regular tv first yeah and then hulu had its uh, its run of it so if you guys ever want to get caught up on them they're all up on both of those stations they're the whole whole nine yards it'll say up on hulu that i've i've missed 245 episodes and i think out of all those episodes i might have missed four (laughs) george okay well x files is cool i'm not as big of a fanatic about it as a lot of people because unfortunately um being the authority on all things horror i realized that most of the stories on the X-Files have been done a lot of times before on different shows, on different movies. On, there was really, they did a really good job of taking all the old stories and making them fresh and new. Right. And you know, all the old ideas and making them fresh and new. Didn't they take a lot of ideas kind of from like Twilight Zone and yeah. stuff? Yeah, a lot. Twilight Zone, Outer Limits. Uh, st- a lot of the old um, you know, science fiction stories. Mm-hmm. Well, the whole idea of, you know, the aliens and the men in black. And yeah, because then you're like, oh, wait, I think I've seen this before. Then you're like, oh, no, that was a different show. That's the thing. And it, it's been done. Now, they did it well. <clears throat> oh, yeah. But, like I say, it, it just couldn't keep mind just because, you know, when you've watched enough of the Kind of like they asked Albert Hitchcock once if he ever got scared when he went to the movies. And his answer was no, because I know how they do it. Yeah. You know, and it's, it probably, that's probably my reaction to the X-Files is... You know, it, it could only interest me up to a certain point because I've seen it all before. But they did it well. Tony, you got any? I know you grew well, up liking that as well like I did. One of my favorite second season, 12th episode, the Freak Show episode, oh, where they the took the time man. to use real freaks. Instead yeah. of just having actors, they got the folks from Jim Rose Freak Show, uh, you know, much like Freak Show the movie back in the day, the black and white. They used real freaks, which is... I mean, in a politically correct age now, you probably will not see. I mean, that's probably the last time that that's been done. I, I'm surprised you remembered the exact episode because I didn't. Nerds. I was going to bring that up because I <laughs> love when the puzzle man was sitting there eating the light bulb. And you had the gentleman uh, hanging his back skin from the hooks, <sighs> swinging around. And that was Jim Rose's actual traveling freak show that you could then see over that summer. I believe a good friend of ours, Cess Carney, is uh, really good friends with the... Uh, the, the puzzle man there that has all the puzzle tattoos and eats of the light bulbs. Uh, I, I, I believe him saying he's performed with him out in Las Vegas. I might be wrong. I'm sorry, Seth, but <laughs> let us know if you're listening. We're going to go down to some music. And, uh, yeah, sometimes the loving that the aliens give you when they abduct you, <laughs> you don't want. So yeah, Let's discuss that in the next segment. Yeah, we will discuss that. We're going to go down to ZZ Top's <laughs> Give Me All Your Loving here on <laughs> Chuckles oh, Crypt, no. Rhode Island Free Radio. Good choice on my part. <laughs>
ZZ Top here on Chuckles Crip or Island Free Radio. Don't hear those boys on the radio much anymore. And they are from the great state of Texas where uh, there is a lot of stories about oh. alien abduction. Um, I think they just get bored out there in the desert. Yeah. It's, uh, no, Texas isn't all desert. It no, is all hot, but it's not all desert. And there's a lot of ranch fields and stuff uh, like that. Desert, you know, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, that all that desert. Yeah. That lonely desert territory yeah. where there is not much to do except stick large objects up your rectum. Well, you know, everybody's got their favorite bed knob. Yeah, right. yeah and it, it always happens to be the toothless one or the one that has never graduated from school that the aliens abducted. Because the aliens don't want to abduct smart people. They only want to abduct Morons. stupid people. Yeah, yeah that's, that's not... What they're going to want to study. They're not well, definitely. I mean, they are kind of entertaining. If I was to be we, an alien abductor, I would want to abduct, like, a smart person so I can probe them for knowledge. But how do they know what's <laughs> Yeah, I don't think they're, pro- not they're not yet. probing them for knowledge, Chuckles. They're probing them in the other end. Just for fun. <laughs> just yeah. to do it. Just kind of like when we pulled well, that's them. That's what it is. It's kind of like an alien frat party. It's yeah. It's like a lab rat. <laughs> like you when we were kids. And uh, we pulled the, the legs off of ants and everything. Yeah. It was it was fun. So that's maybe what the aliens are doing. Yeah, they start, so they started off sticking these gigantic probes uh, up, you know, mm-hmm. Earthlings' anal regions to torture them. But then they found out some of them were enjoying it. Yeah, yeah. and then they stopped. So we're not doing this anymore. St- no yeah, because yeah, we were, like Tony said off air. It's they the probing really has stopped. Right, yeah. we don't yeah. hear about that at all anymore. No, no, we do not. Now, one sort of alien ab- abduction that uh, is one of my favorite all time movies, even as a kid, uh, Disney put out, and you guys are gonna be sitting there going, "What?" Flight of the Navigator. That was a good movie. That was an excellent abduction movie, as you call it, although it didn't really abduct them. Uh, the creatures inside the pen were really cool. I wanted to know more stories of where uh, the UFO had gotten that. Uh, the the storyline behind it was really cool. I like uh, when the alien ship makes fun of the, uh, the fat kid down there yeah. uh, that was there. Uh, a fun, fun movie, not your typical gory death. Uh, all the aliens going to come down and kill you type of deal. It looked like a giant uh, Nerf football, and that's all I could always relate it to. And uh, that, that would be pretty cool to be uh, piloting a UFO around like that. I, if you guys want a fun uh, family movie to watch, uh, Flight of the Navigator, really cool. There's another Disney movie from before then, too. That I don't know if anybody remembers it. Called Escape to Witch Mountain. I was thinking of that the was same a good one, one too. I love that movie. Uh, Disney has put out a lot of really good. Uh, uh, UFO movies that are, are campy. I, I mean, they're not gory or whatnot, but they're very campy. Uh, the Cat from Outer Space, that was uh, a pretty um, weird one, but still fun. Uh, but I, I think I remember hearing ZZ Top playing in the background of that ship when it was flying. I do not remember uh, the uh, Cat from Outer Space. It's No, you don't? No. No? Well, you have the movie. I bought it for you a couple years back. It's probably <laughs> still in the cellophane. <laughs> Because yeah. you buy me movies, then we don't watch them together. Because <laughs> I don't want to watch, watch it, it again. Me. I don't remember it. Now, do you guys? What are you guys' feelings on Flight of the Navigator? I know Tony and I have always talked about this, and the, the one movie that ever always comes up after that is Battery is not included. Yeah, like, it's like those two are, like they're one in the type that should have put those in a box set together. Instead, they usually put Batteries Not Included with Johnny Five. Yeah, <laughs> which. Uh, no, no. A little short circuit. Tactic. So you obviously <laughs> liked the movie Nurse Misery. Yeah, I enjoyed Flight of the Navigator. It was cute and it was fun and it was basically that was. They never made a sequel out of it. Thank you. And don't. It didn't need a sequel. And please. It doesn't need a reboot. Yeah, don't reboot this and ruin my childhood, Michael <laughs> Bay. I know you're looking at this and thinking, please oh my God. Please don't make the fluffy things explode things. <laughs> yeah, no. Let's, let's not. George? It was cute and it was fun, which probably tells you that I never saw it. <laughs> oh, come on. You never saw Flight of the Navigator? Uh, on, I, I honestly have to confess with, with not a twinge of guilt. No, I didn't. Oh, man, that is an 80s movie classic. I am going to have to talk to your significant other about having a date night and maybe switching out one of your gory movies with this. Uh, I just call it prevenge for whatever you're going to do to me in the future. Well, it will... <laughs> As far as 80s movies, I mean, I've, I've watched my share of them. I watched Real Genius. Not, not Disney, but I mean, I watched Real Genius. I watched, um, 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 I don't know. There might be dead air while I think about it. Not too many. But I remember Real Genius. 
for some reason yeah. about the popcorn. Yeah, real genius. Uh, there's not many of those around here where we're sitting, um, <laughs> except for at this table in this room. Uh, let's go down to some music right here, because this is a rather long song, and we'll come back and uh, we'll talk about a movie that I know George will be very excited about, one Ooh. of his favorites. Uh, let's go down to Slash, Anastasia, and congratulations to Guns N' Roses for finally taking their penises out of their anal cavities ah. and giving us fans what we want. They're back together. Anal probing? <laughs>
Uh, what a great song by Slash and Giles there. Too bad uh, it was a good thing coming, but uh, I'd rather listen to Guns N' Roses come out with some new stuff. Now, if you guys are looking to pick up some comic books that are alien-related, some of the best that I'm going to give you right now that you could probably pick up the full sets, and uh, I'll tell you where in a little bit. But one of my favorites, X-Files, of course, uh, Mars Attacks, which is a really uh, screwy book, and I just gave George a Mars Attacks versus Kiss. I'm, I'm restraining myself from reading it out of politeness. Uh, it, it, it is a screwy book, but it's fun. Uh, there's even a Mars Attacks versus Popeye, which I, oh I did like that one. Of course, Transformers. Everybody forgets that they are from outer space. They yes, are aliens. They're not just robots that we made. Yeah, they are not from this planet. Uh, Man Martian, one of your favorite uh, love, DC characters. Man. Excellent stories behind that. Superman, not native to this area. Nope. Uh, you can get some really good stories through the Green Lantern universe because there's a lot of UFO and space creatures and everything through that. And they go interdimensional with some of these characters and really cool. And uh, yes, I got to give it out, of course, to Star Wars, which breaches from Dark Horse to now it's Marvel's property. And if you bring up Star Wars, you have to bring yes, up Star Trek. Yes, I have to do this because there are a lot of Trekkies in this audience and listening. Star Trek is also one of those books where it's doing very well, including some weird crossovers between Star Trek, The Next Generation, and Doctor Who, and Star Trek with The Green Lantern. Uh, some really weird so situations. I'm going to have Nurse Misery do her homework and read some of these because yeah. I will not. Uh, but if you want to pick up some of these books and, and maybe have some full sets, this weekend, this weekend in Massachusetts, one of my favorite comic book stores, The Rubber Chicken, 15 North Main Street, and it's off Route 126 in Bellingham, Massachusetts, will have $5 complete comic book series up there. Uh, along with whatever else they have inside there, you're sure to get your independence and your DC and your Marvel alien fix. Because without the aliens, a lot of these comic series would be boring. Yeah. you got to throw in that uh, creature from outer space that's been lurking over us. that's coming to mess us up. And it's going to take either an alien from another area or some high-tech gadgets to get rid of them. Has Batman ever faced any aliens? Of course he has. Doomsday. Countless times, and uh, he's faced other great um, lantern villains like Sinestro, and uh, uh, countless, countless times he has faced uh, villains, uh, and they got some weird crossovers with him too, uh, as well. Um, like uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones off the top of my head. And even. of course, to blow everybody, everybody's mind, don't forget that Superman is an alien. Yeah, he is. He's 100 percent an alien, not from this area. <laughs> as American as Superman that. sounds, it's. Uh, it says, he uh, kind of looks uh, pretty good, though, for an alien. <laughs> yeah, uh, he ages pretty well, too. He, he looks very boy next door. <laughs> yeah, a uh, boy next door that would ruin your hips. <laughs> I don't think anybody could take that. Now, let's go down to another movie before we get uh, into the music. I want to try to s squeeze all the music in today. Uh, it's going to be hard, but I'm going to try to, at least this last song. And I, can't, I could not mention... Alien movies without bringing this one into play. And it is, I will go on record as saying, the most popular alien movie uh, that has ever been made. You mean and Alien? No. No, <laughs> no, 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 not oh. even. Uh, I'm talking about Invading Earth. And oh. George, you know what that is. Come on, don't lead us astray. <laughs> War of the Worlds. War of the Worlds. The most popular book slash radio recording what caused mass hysteria to the movie the when you mention alien invasion war of the worlds is the first thing that comes to you when you're thinking of movies and that movie still stands out to this day the original as being yeah, we, the we best have to, we have to say the original now the yes. 2005 one that might stand out as one of the worst <laughs> films literally i'll tell you if i was to come up with a not only science fiction, but if I was to come up with a w 10 worst movies ever made, that would probably <laughs> be in the top 10. That was excruciating. Well, I have to, I got to be the, the devil's advocate. I got to kind of say I, I enjoyed it after the third time of watching it. You I hated had to, it in theaters. Yeah, the first time I saw it in the theaters, I hated it. But I had to go back and watch it again. Because I made you. And see the, the reality of the, the movie that everybody missed. The and reality of the movie that nobody missed was that a, a jet airplane crashes into our house. 
containing Tom Cruise. <laughs> a jet airplane crashes into the house. Later on, a, a news van drives up into the driveway of the house where this jet just crashed into, and it pretty much rolls around that driveway <laughs> uninterrupted. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I, George, I'm going to go by and say it. I, I enjoyed it. I, I mean, everybody's going to have their own thing, and I'm sure I'm going to get hate mail. Someone saying I'm uh, stupid and resign from Chuckles Crypt and replace me with the I'll dirty hippie. It, I'll, I'll give it one. It had one really awesome sequence. Anytime the ships were vaporizing well, people. Well, no. When the ship rose, when the ship rose out of the lake. Yeah. Yeah. And destroyed the. That was amazing. Boat. I, that I, was impressive. I enjoyed any time they were getting blasted while they were screaming. That was pretty cool <laughs> watching them turn to. Oh, you know, dust piles. Out of the ground in the city. Uh, and that you could see impressive. the you could see the people's reaction, and, and that would be my reaction too, where they're tripping people so the aliens get them and not me. That's a totally like <laughs> realistic thing. If that ship and that creature's following me, you don't have to be the fastest, <laughs> just the second the fastest. Or to you're trip gonna be able to trip people. <laughs> yeah, just trip them and throw them into them. Yeah. Now I probably wouldn't have uh, put myself in with those screaming memes that were around me. That every time something came, <laughs> they had to scream. Wow. That probably would have been yeah, the person screaming, I tripped. That screaming kid. Yeah. That's just that screaming kid alone. Give him to mean, the UFO. Here you go. Yeah, I mean, you talk, <laughs> we talk about the obnoxiousness of the screaming of the little Japanese kids in Gamera. Yeah. I mean, that screaming kid in Tom Cruise's War of the Worlds, most obnoxious. Although, I don't know, Jurassic Park had a couple of screamers, too. But We're talking no. about the little girl, Dakota Fanning, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I, they didn't have her in it, it'd be a totally different movie. I'll tell you, by... The, about three minutes listening to her, I was hoping she'd die in real life. <laughs> I mean, to this day, I hope she's uh, dead. Uh, nope, she's not. Yeah. But uh, we're getting close to the end of the show, unfortunately. Now, just real quickly, the World of the Worlds radio drama, which I'm a huge fan of, mm. gave rise to one of my least favorite things and probably one of the least favorite things of everybody in this room and probably the reason why we're in this room and not at an over-the-air radio station, it gave rise to the FCC after the war or world no. scare, people called for broadcasting Ugh. to be regulated. Censorship. Talk about horror. <laughs> it was. It definitely was. Now, H.G. Wells' book, incredible, guys. If you get the chance to read that, I, I hands down will say that is an awesome read. Uh, it, whenever you can take the original book and read it instead of watching the movie and whatnot, you'll get more of uh, well, it used appreciation. Well, like, the curriculum for high schools, but I don't know if it still is it, it's, or not. It's, it's not politically correct. Now, you can't be talking about aliens where, without walls. Where do you fall on the side of history where Orson Welles and crew swears up and down they did not expect a panic? Because there's another side to that where they're saying that it was a, you know, they knew it was a prank and they knew it was going to cause this big panic. But CBS well, Radio and Orson Welles, oh, no, we, we never knew that was going to happen. Well, I, I, mean, I could see myself doing that same thing, saying, oh, no, we didn't know that was going to happen. Oh, absolutely. But I don't think, I really don't think they expected what they got. No, I think they I mean, expected be, a little freak out, but because not, not a full-blown riot. No, because wasn't it, a, wasn't it true that they announced that it was a radio play every so often during that broadcast? At the beginning, at the beginning yeah, at but the then beginning. they made it, they they made it sound made it like, again. yeah, they made uh, it sound like a radio, uh, you know, a legit we, news broadcast. We got to be able to get that recording. Uh, would we be able to air that on Rhode Island yeah, Radio? Yeah, 1938. So yeah, we have to be, be able to get that. Maybe for Halloween, Chuckles Crypt will take a break. And, uh, or we can print out the script and redo uh, and, it. Uh, oh, we can reenact it. it. That, that would be <laughs> incredibly fun, especially adding a little clown talent to that. Yeah. But we're getting ready to wrap things up. And before we do that, an, know, uh, some see. honorable mentions for movies. Uh, Battle for L.A., one of my all-time favorites. Uh, Nine was really cool. Uh, <laughs> that, and, of course, you've got to give it out to E.T., uh, one of the classics. We do that, not. <laughs> yes, I do. I enjoyed it, George. We're not all miserable and totic. I think we were little when it came out, um, we appreciate it differently. I'm not, I'm not that miserable and... No, the, I, <laughs> Close Encounters was nice. Uh, we, we caught him. For me, Fire in the Sky as a kid had that some was, really freaky scenes. That there was a go. good one. There are plenty of alien movies out there for people to hate and love. The fact is, is the alien phenomena true or is it created through the media? 
It's your job to figure this out. It's your job to not get probed. Yeah, don't yeah. get probed. <laughs> Keep your butthole uh, closed. So let's go down to what is coming up for Chuckles Crypt, and then yes. we're going to finish things up with Alice Cooper's Brutal Planet. But right, Nurse Misery, quick spin now. Out. So our next event is actually going to be this weekend. It is the Wickford Sea Creature Parade. Part of Chuckles and Laughs cast and crew will be there in some unique costuming. It The parade starts at 10 a.m. in the official kickoff of the New England Quahog Festival. There will be a king and queen announced that will lead off the parade. There will be bands at the end of it. There will be a bear tent. Food. And, yep, food, vendors, everything, all sorts of fun. Go hang out in Wickford for the day. Then that brings us to the Ancient and Horrible Parade, which is Monday, July 4th. It's usually at 4 p.m. Honestly, we're still waiting on some details. <laughs> oh, wait. The website's been updated. It does start at 4 p.m. Yay, life for it staying the same. That's going to be up at, through Gloucester, Rhode Island at 4 o'clock on 4th of July. Then we come to our last event for July, Ocean State Paracon. It is brought to us by Rise Up Paranormal. This year they will be benefiting the Rhode Island Coalition Against Domestic Violence, July 16th and 17th at the Assembly Theater in Harrisville, Rhode Island. They always have a great cast of folks that will be speaking there, plenty of vendors, lots of fun. And come see the Chuckles and Laugh Show cast and crew, as always. That's going to head things out. Uh, stay tuned because uh, coming up next is a haunted cabaret, and I'm sure I've gotten some brain juices going through George. <laughs> Let's wrap things out with Alice Cooper's. And yes, this is the only reason these aliens will never land on our planet. It is a brutal planet. Okay. 